Traveling through rural Iowa can reveal some surprising enterprises. Join me in Calhoun County. Lake City calls itself the town with everything but a lake. It was drained decades ago for farmland, but it's not without its charms for visitors. Founded in 1856 by prairie settlers, there's plenty of history in Lake City, including some old buildings that were in need of renovation. Luckily, some residents were up to the task. To start you off, I paid a dollar for the building. Um, that should tell you pretty much how, what the shape was in the building. Uh, we've retuck pointed the building, replastered the building. Colin King turned this historic Carnegie Library, which opened in 1909, into a restaurant he calls the Carnegie Cafe. He honors the history of the building in many ways. An image of the philanthropist who financed over 100 libraries in Iowa back in the day, Andrew Carnegie, is displayed in the entryway. The library circulation desk is now the bar. And some of the original library bookshelves now display memorabilia Colin has collected. Colin also has a construction business and did much of the renovation himself. But he now devotes most of his attention to being the sole chef and menu planner at his cafe. Well, we're very well known for our salads. Um, we are also known for our sandwiches. We have a blackened tenderloin sandwich, um, which is grilled. And then we also are known for our French onion soup. There's over 40 some items on the menu. What I would highly recommend is our staple of the restaurant, which is the appleberry chicken salad, along with a red velvet cheesecake. Boy, this dressing is phenomenal. What is it? Well, it's a secret recipe that Colin designed, and he doesn't give it out. The only way you can have it is if you buy the restaurant. Well, I'll just stick to savoring the mystery dressing. And it's obvious I'm not alone in my love of the food here. As the noon hour approaches, the restaurant fills up with other hungry patrons. We pull from about a 60 to 100 mile radius, even for lunch. Lake City is a very strong community. There's a lot of support in this community, as you'll find throughout the day on your tours. After lunch, I move on to visit with other people in Lake City who, like Colin, renovated a vintage downtown structure. Paul and Judy Iverson spent four years converting the first and second floors of this former office building into a restful and artistic retreat for overnight visitors. They call it Cornerstone Suites. We want to make all our, all our rooms you know, bright and, and restful. We knew from the beginning we want, wanted our suites themed, but we weren't sure what kind of theme to do. And eventually we found a painting we liked, just happened upon it, and thought, oh, let's do art, artists, because this is kind of an artisan community. And one of Lake City's artisans is Paul Iverson himself. He's a woodworker who handcrafted much of the furniture in each suite to be in the same time period of the featured artists. The rooms even replicate some of the details in the paintings on display. For example, in this, the Johannes Vermeer suite, the 1600s era Dutch artist painting with a tile floor comes to life in the real tile floor of the bathroom. In the suite named for Carl Larsen, a Swedish painter from the late 1800s to early 1900s, the red wooden table and chairs in this painting come to life in 3D in the same room. Again, thanks to Paul's woodworking. Adjacent to this sitting room, in the bedroom, an artist friend even created a mural of one of Larson's paintings. I have always loved Carl Larson. This is a picture I remember from when I was a teenager. and. Um, and I said, yes, let's go with that. And, and I have a Scandinavian heritage, so it, it fit in pretty well. Tell me about the artist that inspired this room. Lars for here was William Bureau, who's a French painter around the same time as Carl Larson, the late, mid to late 1800s. Painted a wide genre of pictures, uh, pictures of angels, pictures of young women like sitting by a, a fountain. 
Now it looks like this is the corner suite of the Cornerstone Suites. Correct. And the views look terrific. What am I seeing out the windows? Well, out here you see the, our beautiful city square, which has got our bandstand, which is a replica of the one built 100 years ago. We have the fountain, which was raised with private funds. Paul built the bandstand in the park. He says he honed many of his woodworking skills while working at another unique business in town, Dobson Pipe Organ Builders. Founded in 1974 by Iowa native Lynn Dobson, this is a renowned company that designs and builds pipe organs primarily for churches, colleges, and concert halls all over America. But during our visit, they were working on a project for the Merton College Chapel at the University in Oxford, England. The number of intricate details are mind-boggling to me, from the wood carving, to adjusting pipes or voicing them, as those in the business call it. And how the heck can they even ship the final product that I'm told will be nearly 40 feet tall, 27 feet wide, and weigh more than 16 tons? We did get a brief look in the shop area, which isn't generally open to visitors. But the company doesn't mind if people drop by the lobby to see photos of some of the organs they've built and to view many of the sculptures owner Lynn Dobson creates from the wood scraps left on the shop floor. The creativity that comes out of this quiet community is simply amazing. And I know I've just scratched the surface during my brief visit.